So let's see what sort of adjustments we can make to this particular image here using the tone curve. But before we go into the tone curve panel, if we consider the clipping warning at the top of the histogram, this makes me want to hit the J key. And now we can see where the clipping is. And I'm going to open the basics panel with the keyboard shortcut control 1. And we can see we've got a black setting of plus 5 here. I'm going to take that black setting out. The other thing I'm going to do is actually white balance the image or attempt to white balance it. And we'll click there. That's made it go a little bit blue green. So I'm actually going to come into there and I'm going to type 5100. Click the return key and enter 0. And now we've got a fairly accurate white balance. We might come back and redo it slightly later. So I'll go control 1 again to shut the basic panel down. I'll go control 2 to open the tone curve. And don't forget on a Mac that will be command 2. So what I'm actually going to do is go and pick the target adjuster. And I'm going to come into an upper mid-tone, one of the lights. And I'm just going to lift that. Right, and you can see the adjustment we've made. We've deflected that in an upward or positive manner. In other words, we've added a little bit of exposure to the overall light tones in our image. The next place I'm going to adjust is these darks here. And I'll come onto the front face of this building because it's in shadow. And we'll now lift that as well. And that's not looking too bad at all. You can see we've actually put a sort of a slight dog leg in the curve itself and as I was saying you can get some situations, some particular images where a, a perfect S shaped curve or a perfect linear curve just doesn't suit. What we can now do is hit the Y key to do a sort of contrast and compare. There's our before image showing all the clipping and here's our adjusted image that's now got a better white balance and appears to be somewhat better exposed with a better distribution of densities throughout the image. We could go and have, a, have another play over here and maybe move the highlights up a little bit more and perhaps just move the darks up a little bit too. We don't want to go too far otherwise we will remove all the contrast from the image but if we then went up into the basics panel and made some adjustments to perhaps the vibrance of the image and the saturation of the image. Now you can see we've actually brought the image to life and if I come over here and click to go to 100% magnification you can see how we've lifted the exposures in the shadows, the mid-tones and we've revealed all the detail in the image and we haven't got any blown highlights. If we come out and then go to the area where the clipping was now you can see we've got detail in all the deepest of the shadows. You can just about make out the inside of the rear wheel on that particular car there. But how the image came off the camera, all those shadow areas were completely choked and blocked. So that's just one way in which we can quickly use the tone curve adjustments and particularly this target adjuster here which is a very very useful tool for doing rapid and quick adjustments to the tone curve. And you can see this tone curve is very convoluted and hardly what you'd call a textbook S-shaped curve. But you can't argue with it. The image is much improved and it just goes to show that theory isn't everything.